Okay, folks, check it out. Listen, we're taking it back to the basics, right? I've had a number of people, even when I'm out on the street, they be bumping into me telling me they always struggle when they're making, you know, some type of chicken, right? So I said, let's just take it back old school like it was when we were younger. You know what I mean? So we finna do whole chicken wings and we finna deep fry them, folks. Let's get it. Okay, folks, so listen, I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible, right? So listen, I got a few ingredients right here. It don't get no less than this right here, right? Boom, we got flour, we got cornstarch. So one, two, we got the chicken wings, and then we got an assortment of, uh, you know, seasonings right there. But the first thing we're gonna do is, I filled my Dutch oven, I went to about, mm, about a third. Let's go ahead and put some heat underneath the bottom of this, because we want to achieve 350, uh, I'm gonna say 350, 360 somewhere right around there as far as the degrees and that's in Fahrenheit, right? Now, I got two apparatuses right here to show you how to get your oil to the right temp, right? I got a candy thermometer. This right here is great. You guys all know how to read it. It's a red line in there. It rises and, you know, decreases. And where it stops is where you see your, uh, your heat is at, right? And then also, you can have a meat thermometer, right? This right here, a food thermometer, you can go ahead and stick this in the inside and check and it'll give you a digital reading. Either way, I like having this and this just to be a little bit on the, the redundant side. All right, so when it comes to the seasoning, you guys can use whatever seasonings you would like. Don't forget, now I have everything measured out right here. You guys can go to my website, that's smoking and grilling with ab.com, and that's w i t a b.com, right? For the full printable, you know, recipe. So this is what we're gonna do. You gotta have this station right here. I'm not gonna do the double bread and all of that. I'm just gonna show you guys how to have success with making, you know, fried chicken. So. I'm gonna go ahead and just add my half a cup. Look, that's a half a cup of flour. Over here, I'm gonna put two tablespoons of cornstarch. Right? Real simple, folks. I just don't want nobody to overthink it. You know what I mean? And I got it. Some people say it's so much trouble to make it. Then when they do make it, it comes out. Sometimes they have like bloody parts and all that kind of stuff. Look. Take your seasoning, add that to it, just like that, right? Now I'm gonna take a whisk, and I'm gonna whisk this around. Now I'm gonna say something to you. For those of you guys been following me for a minute, you've heard this before. It might have sounded weird if you ain't never heard it in the beginning. But listen, when you season your flour, it's okay. When you're done with that and getting it all incorporated together, you gotta taste it, folks. If you do not taste any of your seasoning in your flour, this is why your chicken will be bland. All right, folks. So look, as we starting to come up on temp, right? I take a paper towel, real simple. I know you got some of y'all probably thinking like, man, this is like really, really slow. You know what I mean? But if you want to have success, just check it out. It's this easy, this elementary. You know what I mean? Uh, because we got the right tools. We got a food thermometer here, and then we got the candy thermometer there. That's going to ensure that we got the proper temperature on our oil. Right, and we're not gonna have no issues. Now these have already been cleaned. I done patted these dry a couple of times, you know what I mean? But we just wanna make sure that we got most of the moisture off of here. And then we don't need all of that flour coating and all of that. These are still gonna be crispy. All right, now we're getting close, right? So now what I wanna do is I just wanna go ahead and coat this, you know what I mean? So it's okay to get in here with your hands. And I know we wiped off the moisture. That's what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? Uh, so. Listen, I just take this, and I just pack the flour on, right? We're going to give it a little, you know, pat down and all of that. But, you know, when you look down and spread it, I don't want to see no raw chicken, right? I want to see it just the way you guys see it right here. And I like to get in there and give it that squeeze, right? Look at that, folks. And we take it. And then we stage it. And then we do the same thing with this. It doesn't make no difference what type of piece you have, whether this was a drumstick, you know, thigh, or breast. Somebody talk to me and tell me, how many people are <laughs> frying a breast right now? I got it when you go to a chicken joint, it's gonna give it to you, you know what I mean? Cause they use that like a little filler too, you know what I mean? But tell me, are you guys, you know, frying breast? Now, to give you guys a heads up, if I want to have 350, because these were starting to come down to room temperature, you know what I mean? These are still a little bit on the cold side, right? So remember, when you stick it inside of the hot grease, it's gonna bring your temperature down, right? So 
I like to start around 365, 370, even 375, right? So now I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in, right? Real simple. I think I'm gonna do three only at a time, you know what I mean? And we just drop them in just like that. And we let them work. Remember, shake off all of that excess flour. You know what I mean? It'll keep your oil nice and clean. And you see that right there? You let them work. Now, what you guys see right here, this is called a splatter shield, right? This keeps all the grease inside when it pops up. You see all of that on there? I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but that's what would have been all over the counter, right? So I can take that off, right? Now we look at it. One telltale sign that you guys can see. You notice that it's floating. Yes, sir. When it floats like that, yes. Now, just to ensure, and we want to know, is our chicken done? You know what I mean? We can go ahead and stick this in here, like through the meaty part. Oops, keep slipping off. Pull it up a little bit. Right now, it say 190, so I'm gonna take these out. All right? But look at the color. I didn't do all that extra bread and all of that. You know, so we just take it, just grab them. We just stage them here. You guys can see. Let's see if I can't get this one to flip over. There we go. And I'll take this one. All right, now I'm gonna do the other one. And then we're gonna check them. We're gonna let them cool. Then we move forward, right? I didn't give you guys no time because listen, it's about taking it and testing your meat, right? Once you achieve, achieve that time, I mean that 170-ish, 175, you know they done. And by then they should be floating anyway. So candy thermometer good, cause you know what? We're gonna look at this now and we're gonna wanna make sure that we start again at at least 360. That's why the second batch be come out a little soggy, you guys. You know, when you guys are doing all of those different breadings and all of that, you want to make sure that you got the right temperature before you re-dip, you know, some new chicken. All right. So I've checked these already, but just to get a... Oh, yeah. I don't know how I did it. It's like magic, folks. These are about 192. A little bit longer than I would like, but I'm looking at my color. You know what I mean? As you can see, look, they both float. All three of them are floating. Look at that right there. You can see that's where I like was probing it. All right, then we just add them right there to it. All right, so listen, the real focus is, listen, when you got the proper tools, you don't have no issues. I got it, my grandmother, like everybody else, didn't use none of this. She knew when the oil was hot enough, when to put it in there, and how long to cook it. But for those who don't know, like you guys are asking me, what I'm doing is, I'm just showing you. Meat thermometer, let me know when the chicken is done and I like to keep up with how hot my oil is, right? After that, if you have that success, that'll tell you when it's ready. This right here, when that tells you it's right, and then if you guys wanna know, is it crispy? Right, we didn't put all that batter and them double batters and all of that, you know what I mean? This was just like how to fry. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Whew, look at that. Now, being honest with y'all, I done tasted some of this bread, but look, you can see how hot it is. You can just see how clean it is. I gotta like hold this like this. Look, real clean, right? Mm. Good. And we know the skin is nice. It was already crispy, but the thing was, we seasoned our flour, right? So, try not to like lose my taste. Hey, these right here was left of them, you know what I mean? We started with six, now they gone. Everybody wanted to get a piece, you know what I mean? Super easy to make, you know what I mean? Uh, when you got the right tools. Then I guess if you make them over time and you know, keep repeating it, then you can come up with your own methods of figuring out how everything is right. But I promise you, 165 to 175, you won't have any issues. And then if you keep this at 350, you straight. Now, if you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell everybody out there. There's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. 
I usually grab some of the food and walk off with a plate, but there's still one person behind there that keeps saying, hey, I didn't get one. So you know what? I'm going to leave it here, and guess what? I'm out. Peace. Thank you.